the Orthodox Church. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which you were taught, whether by word or our epistle. Second Thessalonians 2.15 So what distinguishes the Orthodox Church? What was the church like in the first few centuries? So the apostles were preaching at the very beginning. They spread the teaching and assigned bishops. People received the teaching and the tradition from the apostles and they got baptized. Some apostles wrote the good news and others didn't. They just talked about it. They taught the tradition. The church lived about 400 years of tradition and continues to do so. The Orthodox Church continues to do so. What does the tradition include? Prayers, services, special rites, communion, the levels of clergy and their tasks, a way of life, the dogma, and keeping the tradition itself. The Bible was assembled from the available writings around year 397 and it was considered as a reliable part of the tradition. So the Orthodox Church continues with the tradition as received from the Apostles. The church builds on the foundation of Christ. For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 3.11 There is no change in dogma, no change in faith, and no change in the tradition. There is no change in the ideology of Christ. Everything is still the same as it was 2,000 years ago. There's no modification to make things fit the current days. The Bible and the Tradition The Bible is a reliable part of the tradition. One cannot understand the Bible without the tradition. For example, the Lord says, I am humble and lowly in heart. Matthew 11:29. So what is spiritual humility? What does it mean, I am humble and lowly in heart? How can one achieve that? Because this is definitely something spiritual. It's not the common characteristic of being a humble person. The Lord also said, what I say to you, I say to all. Watch. This is in Mark 13, 37. So watch what? What are we watching? What is spiritual struggle? Because this watch relates to spiritual struggle. Who can show us the way? Also, the Bible is not an earthly book. Analyzing it as a work of art doesn't work. It doesn't help. Because this is deeply spiritual. Some instructions cannot be understood without the faith, as we saw earlier. So now we'll have a quick look at the groups that deviated from the orthodox path. First, the non-Chalcedonians, who objected to the contents of the fourth congregation of church fathers in year 451. And this group includes the Copts, Assyrians, Armenians, Ethiopians, and Melinkara. They judged the mother church and deviated they are trying to come back mostly, but it's very difficult for them because they have established a certain history for themselves and it's difficult to change now. 
And the main question was, does Jesus Christ have one nature or two natures? So they fell into a confusing, foggy theology and could not answer this question. Also, can the priest loosen the power of sin? Not all believe that. Although the Lord said, Assuredly, I say to you, whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Matthew 18, 18. What about the Copts as a main group? So, Pope Dioscoros was invited three times to the convention that we talked about, but he decided not to go. He denied that Otitius was a heretic, and now the Copts say that Otitius was heretic. They accused St. John the Golden Mouth of being heretic. Now they changed their mind. They accused the Orthodox Church of being Nestorian for 1,539 years, and now they changed their mind. So, a lot of random decisions, a confused group, and a foggy theology. Another group that deviated from the right path, the Catholics, mind you, some of the first popes are saints in the Orthodox Church. So, Saint Eclemendos, Saint Leo, who spoke against the one nature of Christ, Saint Martinos, Saint Gregorius Dialogos, who wrote the pre-sanctified Mass. So some of the writing of the names may be different. They defended the faith, okay? They were real Orthodox popes. They prevented any deviation during their time. And they put rules, but unfortunately, the successors deviated from those rules. So one of the groups took control of the Vatican in year 1054, and they continue to do so. And they started changing the belief, changing the dogma. They use mental analysis, they change whatever they like. For example, they said that the Holy Spirit proceeds from both Father and Son, although the Lord himself said, the Spirit of Truth proceeds from the Father, in John 15, 26. So, they say that non-believers are saved, and then the question comes, why did Jesus come then, if non-believers can be saved? They issued forgiveness deeds, which basically means you pay the money, they give you a piece of paper saying that you can enter heaven. Can you really buy heaven? What about the commandments? What are they there for? They consider some sins as an acceptable way of life, such as homosexuality. And the virgin birth of Mary herself the story of the purgatory, mixing religions such as the Bachamama, which we saw on the news, and a lot of other things that they have changed. What about the Protestants? So, Protestants, they protest, they are objecting to a lot of things, which basically means they are disobedient, objecting to the commandments objecting to the instructions. They deny the work of the Holy Spirit in the church. So everything they do, they say, we're just doing this in commemoration. There's no actual Holy Spirit coming down to bless us during baptism or during marriage or during anything. They just say, this is commemoration. So the spirit of objection is getting stronger in them. Some of them eat bread, others drink wine during prayers for communion. And they consider the Bible as the only reference. 
while the Bible was assembled in year 397 by the Orthodox Church. They allow liberal explanation of the Bible. Anybody can explain the Bible and teach it, although as we saw earlier, it's not possible to do so. And the result is that hundreds of groups objecting to one another. Now there are hundreds of Protestant groups all objecting to one another. Each group is saying we are the right church. Some groups are making peace with Catholics right now. So they are not protesting anymore against the Catholics. Smaller groups deviating from the right path. Several smaller groups with mixed beliefs some orthodox beliefs with other non-orthodox beliefs and the bible says what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness can you mix beliefs mix and match basically they are confused people and this confusion is from the devils for example the roman catholics who are confused between catholics and orthodox many spirits and people looking for a sign the Lord says an evil and adulterous generation seeks after a sign the Lord also says first cleans the inside of the cup and dish that the outside of them may be clean also so for these smaller groups we say you guys need to focus and you're welcome back to the Orthodox Church. The Orthodox Church continues with the Holy Tradition as received from the Apostles. There's no change in dogma, no change in faith, no change in the tradition. No change in the teachings of Jesus Christ. My church, the gates of Hades, shall not prevail against it. That's what the Lord says in Matthew 16, 18. So everyone is invited to come back to the Orthodox Church. I hope you found this video useful. God bless you.